One of the biggest problems that I have seen during um, system development, right? Whether that you're building machines, whether you're built, whether you're building a plant, whether you're building a campus of plants. One of the biggest problems I've seen is during the initial design phases, the the correct people are not in the room. I have one here from John Fox, looking for your commercial opinion of speaking IT slash OT to an audience that doesn't understand that a network or HMI outage has no effect on the PLC running its process. Oh, this is like the cloud application one. All right. So here's my recommendation. Number one, don't use the terms IT and OT. Okay. And, and I, and, and here's why. When, when, Arlen Nipper started using IT and OT a couple of years ago. He was saying the convergence of IT and OT. He was not using that term thinking it was going to become a marketing slogan. Okay. <laughs> and so it, it, it meant something. He was saying, hey, there's pieces. So for the, when you say IT and OT, no one knows what the hell you're talking about. Okay. Why don't you say the stuff that the IT department controls and the stuff that happens on the plant floor? Because that's more effective. People understand that your machines, connecting your machines to your business. That's another good way of describing it, okay? When you say IT and OT convergence, what happens is people's eyes glaze over now. When you say digital transformation, their eyes glaze over. When you say industry 4.0, their eyes glaze, they roll their eyes. Oh, we've heard this one before too, mm -hmm. you know? Um, number one, what was the second part of the question? Well, what he's saying, how do you explain to someone that it doesn't matter that the HMI connects disconnects from the PLC running its process. How would you explain that to someone that PLC that, and HMI connection? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. What I would say is, is I, I wouldn't even explain it. That's not something I would get, get to that. Cause I'm not going to explain that. I've got two separate programs. One, one running in the HMI and one running inside of the PLC or one running in the SCADA system and one running it, and they're independent of one another because they're not always independent of one another. Sometimes you have an idiot who writes logic, PLC logic inside the SCADA system, that if you do disconnect the SCADA system of the PLC, the process will stop running. Sometimes you end up with that. But I, I generally wouldn't explain that. What I, th what, this is oh, the he, reason- he I followed up with some yeah. additional information. He said, a network outage occurred and a PLC continued to run the process as designed but a QA error resulted in a product contamination. We are the controls integrator. Help explain this to C-suite at the plant. So the, uh, it sounds like the QA department was dependent on data that it, was, it then lost information to, but the PLC ran its process, resulted in a product contamination. They're the right. controls integrator for that plant, and they're talking to their, talking to their customer, the customer, the C-suite, explaining what went wrong. What you say is this, is that, there are, um, th this is what I would say. I would say we're in the business of making mistakes and recovering quickly and you should be too, okay? A mistake that you made was you never asked the, you never thought, you never asked the question, um, <laughs> what happens if the network goes out, okay? Here's what happens. If, if, you, have, if you have a, qual a QC comp uh, uh, critical application running in the HMI, and that HMI is connected through an ethernet cable to the PLC. And that PLC is connected to the process through field wiring, okay? The way that the, the, way that the PLC fails running the process is by cutting the wires, okay? <laughs> you gotta go in and physically cut the field IO, right? The way that the HMI in the PLC fails is by uh, having a network outage. One of the things that we do when we develop our applications, we actually go PLC, uh, PLC, HMI, SCADA, MES, ERP. We show the layers and then we show the roles and responsibilities and the criticality, criticality at each layer. That is, what is the uptime? So when we write a PLC program, we show that a PLC is, we expect it to have five nines of uptime in a year. We show that the HMI is expected to have three or four nines of uptime every year. The SCADA system is supposed to have one nine of uptime throughout the year. The MES system is going to have one nine of uptime. We show that. We show those uptime numbers so that they are aware that if you put a QC critical element in this layer, then you have to expect 18 minutes of outage per year. And then they can say, okay, well, that needs to run on the edge. I want to say this. Um, PLC, a lot more can run on the edge today because the, the processors that run in PLCs are much more powerful. You can store alarms for years if you want to. You, 
the things that are absolutely process critical need to live on the edge. They got to live on the edge. So that means don't connect the HMI to the PLC through a common network switch. You physically connect it to the PLC. So it can't, a network outage doesn't impact it. But that, that's part of the engineering design. Those are considerate questions you have to ask while you're designing the system. Awesome. Great question. Uh, that one was from John Fox, right? And question. Sonia Scriven added a nice comment. This is why you need to have all stakeholders at the start of the project. That, so that's spoken like a true project manager right there, Sonia, nicely done. So this is one of the thing, this is one of the biggest problems this is a very good point, Sonia. One of the biggest problems that I have seen during um, system development, right? Whether that you're building machines, whether you're built, whether you're building a plant, whether you're building a campus of plants. One of the biggest problems I've seen is during the initial design phases, the, the correct people are not in the room. How often, all these controls engineers here, how many times are you part of the discussions before a machine is built so that you can ask the question, hey, do you have a state register in your PLC code? When you, hey, machine builder, when you build this, are you gonna include a state register? Are you gonna include a lifetime counter? Are you going to include state by cell? Those questions never get asked. So when someone wants an MES system, one of the very first steps, one of the first things you've got to do is put those in. And if all the stakeholders were part of the initial discussions, you would have a lot of the groundwork, a lot of the framework you need to develop IIoT solutions without having to go back and integrate.